Hello, good morning. This one's a bit abstract and spiritual. So forgive me in advance. Dear Alessia, 12, 10, 21. Don't waste time beating yourself up. Defeat comes from within. I mean, don't get me wrong. The world is obviously a brutal place. In nature, jaws grip guts and send wanderers into oblivion. Soldiers get lost on battlefields, never to return to home again. And when you fight tyranny, you will be tested with extreme loss and a pressure to make it all just go away, to relent to the status quo so you can have comfort food and unwind before a fire. But our ancestors knew that life had more to do with cold showers and retribution than hot Epsom salt baths and scrolling NFT trades while dreaming of a better life with people's minds caving in. I'm drinking coffee from a bowl this morning. Both you and your mama are still asleep. Here are the goals. Write lyric sheets, organize paintings, fill out tax info, set up the studio and listen to a mix. Trade watches on 47th Street, watch dust breakers and try not to paper hand the three I have left, but maybe trade one more and then the other two will just be house money. Watch the funks take over the world and wish I had more. Wishing you had more is a trap though and can send you spiraling in this life. But to be content is the stuff of mystics or wise men. To be content is a prize everyone is chasing and no one quite gets because too much of a challenge, because it's too much of a challenge for us to really live up to our potential. You have to be perfect. And then if you're perfect, you don't let go enough. There is no perfect solution. You do what you can, you do the best you can with whatever cards you've been dealt and that's it, don't beat yourself up. And if things ever get dark or before they get dark, turn to the Lord and pray. It's uncomfortable to hear it for some, but all roads finally lead you to turn over your difficulties to the Lord. You could even say life is a series of breakdowns till you find your way back to the beginning and willing to surrender. The ego runs its games and is disgusted with concepts like these. You mean, I can't handle everything the ego says? And the answer is always, try my friend, and come back to me when you find out. The ego is a small box trying to squeeze into itself an infinite world. The ego is a small box trying to squeeze into itself an infinite world. The ego is a small box trying to squeeze into itself an infinite world. Only a small part fits, though. To fully embrace all of it, you have to let go into your own limitations and accept a higher power. It's necessary for most things. My little goals for the day, hopefully I'll get one or two of them done. Did I mention organizing this blog? The attempt to give, the attempt to help, so often met with animosity, you have to laugh and once again turn it over. My whole stance is to resist tyranny. How could that be unpopular? But it is. Perhaps it's a question of style or just being unlikable. I can live with unlikable. I can't live without freedom. So you make sacrifices and once again, simply do the best you can. We are facing trials for our soul. We want to make it about TV shows and personalities, but it's all much more than that. This is far too big a production for it to simply be a spinning ball we hang out on for a while. Zoom out, when in doubt, zoom out, when in doubt, zoom out. There is a purpose to this party. If you think about it, there has to be. There are stakes and mistakes and good breaks. Thank God for those. Get comfortable praying, baby. No life worth a hill of beans doesn't lean on it. Because to be out here changing anything at all, you must be out on a limb. To be out on a limb, you have to lean on something. Invisible hands holding you up to the sun. Your fragmented ego falling off you like tattered clothes. You think to yourself, that's what I was protecting. As you get embraced into the sky, our lives are short, but eternity is forever. From here, we don't return to darkness. At least I would be shocked if that's the result. All this build up for nothing.
It doesn't really make sense. Dusk Breakers was a good trade. Lord knows I've made some bad ones. That's okay. Being humble is good. It refocuses you to the source of all that's eternal and nestled in his bosom. You ask for help and receive it. You don't have to do this alone, and you can't do it alone. People can pretend for an entire lifetime that they don't need anyone but a limited ego and a shoulder to cry on, but that can't be the case. The sky is too big for that. The sky is too big for that. The sky is too big for that. The sun too mysterious. Love and loss too intense. Freedom too valuable. Tyranny too present. Those that need your help. Those that need your voice. Too willing to find you in the dark. Words too powerful. Hope too sought after. And death too much like a blue moon falling in the ocean. For this all to be an accidental sacrifice. Friendships too beautiful, poetic, and rife with betrayal. The dreamers all looking for a song to sing along, but no voices lining up. So what we have is a cacophonous madness, a choir of the disenfranchised begging for a new world to begin. Little do they know, their televisions are the weapons aimed at their soul, giving them false alpha and a reason to betray their creator. Little girl... Don't lose sight of that voice that sings with you in the night. The Lord's prayer is old-fashioned, but it will hold you there tight to the brightest light. Our Father, who art in heaven, may we come laugh with you there.